please i do not own this design i'm only going to be redesigning it so that nobody will drag me online all right so let's proceed um so as i was saying what did you use to screenshot the full screen um you can use the normal screenshots on i use the sniping tool so the sniping tool has different features if you have updated your pc it has different features you can do a full screen uh, mode or you can do um, sort of a window mode you have free form mode and then you have the rectangular mode so that's that's what the sniping tool currently can uh, achieve for you so you can just snipe one at once once you put it in full screen mode it will just snap the entire screen um, of the design for you so maybe that was a website I screenshotted let's go on um, so first thing first let's let us get out our colors so I like to do that first so I'm going to get out our colors and I'm going to actually post this video later on if I have the time so I'm going to get out this color first and then from this design I see that there are other colors um, there so I'm going to get out this other one there are like three shades of colors in that session so let's do that so that we can create like a color style and we don't have to go back and forth again so I'll create this dark shade and you know what let's just focus on the main colors all right I'll just get rid of all these ones we can do this when I get to that point if not we're going to have so many colors to play with so the background color the background has two colors they are they actually used multiple colors not just two they used also the primary and the secondary color for the background depending on the sections now people design in in something we call containers and that is how developers actually code these things at the end of the day what they do is they grab your designs and they they break it into containers like from this point from this top here to somewhere around here can be one container and then this from here to somewhere around here is another container and then there's another container here so they, they design in squares all right you can now easily remove your rulers by hitting the ruler and then doing hide rulers you can bring it back later on as well uh, for now I'll leave it as remove all horizontal rulers right so so it's best to design in containers i'm going to let you in on that once we proceed further so the colors the first one is this one at the top and the color in case you're taking notes i'm going to tell you the color name so the color is f a f a f a that's the color for the top in case you want to redesign this as well and then this one i'm sure it will be white so it's f f f f f all right so for now i'll be taking down notes of the main colors that have been used for this design and then going downwards let's let's go downwards going downwards we also have this color over here I, let me check if it's the same so it's the same f f f a f a f a with the first one so we'll choose i think this should be the primary color so we'll choose this and then the final one would be okay we have two one more so we'll pick the final one downwards where uh, the roots all that and so it's a different shade of this green and that's that's the color all right we also have text color so text color usually for me I like to choose the green color uh, which is the primary color I'll choose it and then what I do is once I choose that color I would go to my color uh, wheel or color station and then I'll just take it downwards to something like this somewhere around here or the end and I'll use this particular color for the text but let me see what they've used and we would so once you click on these four styles you're going to see other colors that are in my library all right then you can click on the plus you want to add a new color so click on the plus once you do that you can now name it so for this one i'm going to name it background background hyphen color you, 
there's nothing that hyphen is doing okay it's just my own naming style i'm sure some other designers have their own naming style as well the next one is and if you could you actually want to do this in this manner so the next one is white so it's pure white the same thing all right and i'll type in white right um the other one is this color which would be used 10 percent of the time so it's the ascent color or well, i'm going to type in primary yeah and i have the primary i'm going to type in this other one i'm going to say secondary All right did someone leave me a message akin i have your hands up do you have a question please go ahead okay your hands are down now thank you um so i'm going to proceed if you have any questions um you could just wait towards the end i just take note of it and i'll answer it towards the end right thank you akin all right so we have the secondary color and then the last one um i don't know what i'll name this one i'll just name it footer footer color all right always name it what you can change later like if you if you have like text color you can come back and adjust the color of the text and that is the purpose of creating a style guide so probably you you finally got a perfect color for the text you can just come here click on that color you don't even need to click on all of these i'm going to get rid of all of them now just select all of them and press delete and you can see all of the style guides in our property channel all right so in this property tab you can see all of them here and all you need to do is simple just go to that color you want to change any of them you will see this edit style this icon click on it and then you can come here click on the color and then you can adjust it to anything you want so i'm going to undo that all right and then i will draw a shape here and give it a color style like that black and then i will go back to the black and then try to adjust it let's see what happens to that black now so whatever i do to this black would affect that shape over there all right, even though there are a thousand and one shapes it will affect all of them and that's why it's very important that you use color styles for your designs it's going to really help you a lot all right uh let's go on the color mode like a component okay so components are reusable um reusable um elements of your design so it, those it works yeah it works more like components as well because you can use it across your designs all you need to do is just edit the information like for instance an e-commerce card i know a lot of people are itchy for the main design so let's go into the design uh now i'm seeing all of the people joining in we have about 55 persons here now um so i'm sorry for keeping you guys waiting first step go up to frame click on frame i have my phone open click on desktop and the frame i usually use for text for the web view is desktop so i'm going to choose desktop bring it by the side i'm going to title it i like titling my stuff so i'm going to title it landing page right and um i'll continue with the design the next step give it a margin so you have to create a grid and this grid is going to help you position the designs better so i'm going to click on layout grid click on the settings here for layout grid settings choose columns change it to 12 all right i like to change the color so i'll drag it down to black i like black the red is a bit disturbing for my eyes and then for margin i use 100 all right and then gutter i use 24 you can use 20 you can use 24 you can use 30 so depending on what you're you're doing like i always tell people own your design so whatever you design is your choice so just own whatever you're designing so that's that i'm going to use the ruler to measure where they've actually created their navigation at the top so that's why i'm dragging the ruler down so that when you're recreating something you know it's not your original idea you just have to uh, uh, pinpoint where they have certain things and that is where they have it so i have the center and then 
all I'll do now is come into this design and I'm going to draw a circle and then you can actually edit a circle so circles have what you can click on to adjust certain things about them so I'm going to touch this and move it upward all right that circle there there's a hole or a circle that makes it an arc and then from this center one you can give it a negative space just like what I'm doing all right so that's what I'm going to use and by doing so I now have the circle I'll just zoom in a bit and something like this right so this is how we do our recreation all right anybody that does not tell you that this is how we do it is lying to you right the angle is on 10 let's put that at zero and then to flip it upside down instead of having to turn it or just press shift plus v shift plus v would flip it for you and that's all you need to do i select both of them group it with my color style click on this style the, that same place you want to add a style i'm to just doing this basically for people that don't know how to create color styles click on the styles and then choose black so we have that black the next thing i'll do is to bring in my fonts um uh, click on the text or you type T click and then type the, the name of what you want to do and the name there is generics All right style again choose black Go up here and for this font. I think it would be around 20 All Right not bad Not bad. I'm going to use another font Mena one of my best fonts and I'm going to use the medium version of it. Let's change this to 19. Right, I'll just leave it at this, move it upwards, select both of them, put them in auto layout. Yeah, I like it. I'm going to go into settings and there's something called vertical trim that um, Figma just added. I'll click on it and I have something perfect. Right. So I have that perfect. I'll select this text, move it out, and I'll type about. This about will be 16. Usually you can use 14, but I'll be using, you know what, let's use 14. So 14 is fine. And then I will change the font to SF Pro. You no, know, let's use Hevetica. Kind of like the Helvetica font, so I'll use Helvetica as a body font. So we're using 14 for this top and medium, right? With that, whoa, Sorry guys, I wanted to bring someone into the call and I mistakenly hit X. So sorry, I'm going to be careful uh, next time. So sorry guys, I wanted to bring someone into the call and I mistakenly hit X. So I, I, hope, I think that's one uh, issue with the tabs. Once you hit X, it's gone. Alright, so I'll be careful next time. Alright, so all I need to do next is I already have this. So I'm going to um, I'm going to type in the words. I already have all of this, so there's no need. Select this, put it on auto layout. Select this next one, and then duplicate that five times. And it's going to work the same for this other one. But we'll leave that. Take this frame and this frame, cut it, and paste in our frame. Sorry about that select this paste it in our frame and then we can move it to fit our line and then for this one i'm going to center it and then duplicate it i'll get rid of this line we don't need it anymore S select this hold alt move it out once you do that 
cannot type what's the CTA is sign in no that should be sign up I'm not signing sign up right and login or sign in whichever one right move this place it here move this as well then we'll put this in auto layout I like to draw my frame I don't I don't use auto layout yet so I draw the frame I'm using a height a height of 33 but I'm going to change that to 35 All right and center this horizontally and vertically and that's that give it a stroke of black and a, a radius of four for now let's give it eight let's see how that looks it is fine let me accept all these people right so with that i'll select all of these including this and give it the a, a vertical center aligned so they are all aligned at the moment right let's proceed so we'll come back to all of this select this bring it downwards and then we can type our text bring clarity to your walk every time all right doing this I'm going to drag my text here I'm I'll leave three space here in the grid and also with this end I'll leave three space here in the grid so with that center this and then I can increase the text to 64 and then make that bold right constrain that to the center right we have this and then we can have the body text so I'll bring this here right so that's perfect and I'm going to lock everything upward here into a frame and that's what I've done and get rid of this other one give that frame a white background so that when our text flows in our text will go in this manner All right so body text grab this bring it downwards make that body text 16 you can use 18 uh, in most cases make it regular in Helvetica you see it as Roman all right so make it Roman and then we can give it the body text so the body text says gener generics helps your team share ideas helps your team share ideas collect their knowledge and stay on the same page across time and space right center that it's too long in as much as this one ran from this point to this point you still have to make the adjustment for this other one and you can see what we have there center this right and we'll use 18 and by using 18 I'm going to change my line height to let's say 28 yeah let's reduce this some more okay all right all right so we have this so I'm using 18 for my body text and regular and then I'm using 64 for my uh, what's it called for my header and I'm going to change the header font to the primary font and this way I will increase it some more I want it to be that same two lines and the body text would be a vertical 
all right so move this upward the space between them is let's make that 45 all right and time for us to have our buttons so i'm going to grab this text bring it downwards the button for this is get started so get started close it out now my button height for this one would be 57 All right so I'll change that to 57 and then give it the primary color that they used make the text bold center it horizontally and constrain it to the center of the button that way if i increase the light length of the button or the width of the button the text goes responsive with it uh, place this here and then the second button is going to be request a demo so request demo change it from bold to let's say medium and see what we have put it on auto layout and this auto layout will be 20 in spacing and we have this now you cannot have two primary buttons obviously so we're going to change one to a secondary button but let's give it a radius the radius is 10 so for this other one i don't quite like uh, this type of buttons um, the tertiary buttons i don't quite like it so i'm going to give it i'm going to give it the same color give it a stroke put the stroke on two in weight and then close out this other one and we're going to have something like this i don't like the tertiary button in this regard yeah so i'll leave it this way right now it's time to draw or construct that this guy right so to do this is very simple we just have to draw a circle over here give it that color so that i will duplicate it to still be the same thing so i'm going to move this out and let's do the other one something like this use the size give it this color round those corners select both of them put them on auto layout give it a spacing of 16 right and with giving it that spacing we can move this downwards select this send it in a bit put both of them on auto layout go outside select both of them auto layout select this give it some more and it's four okay move this out a bit and this out almost closer right pick this duplicate it this will become the primary green and then we can do the same thing for this one does someone have their hands up right so put all of them on auto layout and we are done with this one for this one all right so this other part so I'm going to draw this shape I just draw the shape and then round those corners something like this and give it a stroke pick this color for the stroke round it a bit hide the fill for now and inside there I will draw another frame I will take off the space of this other one and then by doing that we can now bring this into that frame right and by doing this 
can give it that color and we don't need that part anymore so get a text from here bring it here and just type in hi Davio constrain it to the left close out the width and then we can increase the size just come here and increase the size something like this make it medium comma bring it downwards select this bring it this way enlarge it and then give it a primary color right after doing that the other things are quite easy draw a frame use a frame don't use a shape right and once you do this you can now give it a stroke I'm going to give it a stroke of this sharp color then round those corners to 10 and then inside this we can use the pen tool to draw but I'll draw from outside so I'll draw this sorry that's quite far then take it this way right press enter bring in this person right give that the other stroke increase the stroke cut that ctrl x press select the frame paste it in there position it how you want it duplicate spin it the other way shift plus h to spin it this other way and this way should work right select it again duplicate it bring it this way spin it this other way move it upward right once we've done that one would we'll duplicate it again control no, this one control D bring it here control V control H and something like this yeah so we'll draw a circle obviously at the center reduce the size a bit to flow on the line give it a stroke hide the other parts this one is two the stroke would be two and we're going to have the same thing over here select that do it this way nice we're going to do the same thing over here so put this here select the frame and with the eyedropper tool select the background and there you would have it oh sorry select this you know what already select the background copy that color select the fill paste that color there change the stroke to our color and we have our first one the second one is very simple so duplicate this from that frame i open it up select everything and delete select it back hide the frame the fill rather draw a line with l you can draw a line right center it the line should be two pixels and I'll pick this brown color that's it then duplicate it put it here select the first one duplicate it spin it this way and then bring it to this corner right enlarge it so that it will go across the frame and then duplicate it to the next one and to the next one and you can select all of them group ctrl d and then ctrl h and we've done that select the background select that color paste it in the first one and we have that Okay, let's see if we made a mistake. Ok, 
hey, we didn't make any mistake. Take out the frame from this one and then take this downwards, reduce the size of this, take it this way, reduce the size of this, select both of them, give it this color, right, duplicate it, delete one, select the other one, enlarge it, duplicate this, enlarge it, select the first ones at the top, right select this position 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 right so we have that draw a circle very small circle put it up there go to the unsplash plugin very quickly Once you do that, still loading. So why is loading? We'll just give that a primary color, knowing that that's for the image. To know that that to make that more clear for the developer that that's an image, you can click on this box, go to the solid, go to image, close this out, and leave it like that. All right. So we have this. Where is our major frame? let's see does it move everything yes cool so make that frame white give it a not background color a white and the stroke would remain the way it is right so with that select this and move it into our frame center it right so we have this and for me, I think I would like to call make this one this color. I don't know. I'll, I'll check that out as well. The image is up. So select portraits. Just click on portrait. And a lot of people like to use this first girl. <laughs> and I know why. Because it's much easier to just pick her. Um, but I will just go down a bit. I'll choose the white one. The white guy. So that I don't have any color constructs. Um, fighting in the design and we'll do this other one free the number of space between the header and buttons I'll come to that once I'm, I get to that point I've seen your question all right so select this send it upward a bit and then with that we can proceed to other things free 14 day trial turn on my my iconify and remember to use just one icon source for your icons so that the icons are similar if you're using feather icons use feather icons if you're using iconify or other platforms you can use that one so I'm going to type free 14, 14 day trial. For those people just joining in, I'm recording this session. So probably later I would have it up. I'm not sure. And then I'll make this 14. So free 14 day trial. And we're supposed to have an icon next to it. So by creating one, you can just duplicate that particular one and just do it for the rest of the two they are the same thing and then the logo as well uh, we don't have that time to download the logos so we would use text for now and just focus on the things that have to do with text and shapes and we'll type in tick i think it should be tick still loading so let's continue with the logos all right so this thing is not where it should be constraint to the right select this and move it let it flow on our line all right so let it flow on the line there is really close to the end so somewhere around here should do 
and this is fine all right it's now at the center okay so our tick is here we have to get more things but since it has opened once it would not be a challenge the next time change that color to the primary and then select both of them put them on auto layout select this lock it and type 20 i'm going to reduce the size and then for this text they really reduce the color well i'm going to use let me try 60 percent of the color so i'm using 60 percent of the color the spacing or proximity between the tick and the text is five so we'll move that upward and then we can have that just duplicated three times here so the spacing between them is 84 so i'll select other one put them on auto layout center them block them at the center so whatever i do now they would not it won't affect any of the spacing i've done so no credit card required right and then this one is cancel at any time okay lock that lock that as well you can see it's still at the center so we have that at the center bring that downwards a bit and then we can have amazon Amazon give it some spacing 1016 creative market creative market Shopify Airbnb ensure to use logos for yours I mean their logos and then the last one is drop dropbox so select all put it on auto layout for now select this three move them in bring this one here and i'll just select all and put them on auto layout yeah that's exactly what i want center it right move it upward a bit once we've been able to do that the next thing is to do the other ones then give them the free so we're going to do for this other part this other part so first step so this would go downwards a bit this is at the center constraint to the center as well so select i'm reducing the I'm going to make this bold and then I'll reduce the size to 32 right so I'm going to reduce the size of this to 24 and then I'm going to type 1 first step right and the first step we're going to get out a message icon message so you can type mail or message anyone will bring out the icon I like this one so I'll use this one close that out all of them had icons we'll just use one icon because of time move this upward extend this right so move this away select both of them proximity between them is 16 so I'm going to leave that do this other one now this is divided into three so we're going to make use of four four each so i'll select all of these and move them to the end yeah so this would contain four lines i'll put it at the air and then i'll reduce the size to 16. make it regular and then they actually made this the same as the text so i just make this let me see 16 and see so 16 works as well medium and 
would use loramidium can type all of those texts so we use lorem and with lorem we can get out dummy text so the text here i'm seeing is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so i'll type 16 and i have that the space in between them are too much i'll type auto select it and type in in the line height auto and it will give me this and then i'll reduce the font size a font opacity to like 70 or so select both of them put them in auto layout and then select this other one constrain it to the top right Bring back my trim right and it's time to fix this guy so bring this downwards this way and I want to fix this guy so I'll select this guy and move him downwards now he's fixed I'll just get rid of my grid lines right select this move it this way to touch the second four grid and then the last one as well right okay yeah so we have all of those select them bring them downwards a bit give it a line so i'm doing this before i get the order to rolling and i'll just get the color for now right so this is a color i'm going to title this icon color all right select all of this select all of this stuff make it the icon color right so that works select this as well i'll give it the icon color right right with that i select the body text of the hero section and the header bring them downwards const put them in an auto layout i won't put them in auto layer yet just constrict them to the left side move this right and can put tidy up your docs Comma. we're going to use the first six so that's one two three four five six so it won't exceed six and then the text obviously would reduce to 48 and then the weight i'll be using medium and we can now continue and type tidy up your team work okay increase the text spacing and then we can type the first one is first feature from generic software make that medium for now then duplicate it that's on 18 duplicate it I'll make the other one 16 make it Roman that's regular and i'll just copy up the other body text and just put it up here reduce the size something like this and this is what text 70 percent right so with that i'm just going to touch this a bit and with that we can drop a line going around some something like this and then just have the tie to here for the other one select these two move them this way select all of them put these two in auto layouts then select all of them give them that spacing and the spacing is 32 select the lines alone 
I'll give them the icon color and also 50% off their colors and we can do the image thing that you see here it's very easy so we we'll do the first one drop a frame right give it a stroke and hide the fill and with that I'll just copy up this image team bring it here paste it put it up there reduce the size a bit right grab one of this guy bring him back here paste him so all of them will be the same only one thing will change the image so before you twist it before you bend it ensure you've finished everything then you can now twist it that's the trick to twisting if not you're going to you're going to do something that would not be correct so after doing all of this all I need to do next is round that radius give it 10 radius and I'm done I'm actually done I'll just draw the shape for the image over here right so we have this we have this and I'll run those radius to 10 and then you can choose a, an image for it go to on splash and just choose any random image I'll just go to architecture and I'll just choose any image so I've chosen the first image and it's up there select the frame bring it down to this one right duplicate it to this one then change the image I'll change the image to this one and this one to this one and then this other one is going to be bigger so bring it here and then you're going to make it bigger bring the scale to before we scale it up let's change the image so I'll change it to this one and then close that up then with the scale to I'm going to scale it up to this point yeah so that's that's what we're rooting for and then you can now spin it to something like this bring it downwards take this upward a bit and we are we're done select all of them and give them a feel a feel color white so we choose white remove the stroke and then we're going to give them a frame a frame is going to be around them and one shooting out of the frame so I'm going to give it the frame color that's the frame color the FF background that's the frame color so our background and this one this one where's the background this one will go into it right yeah so that's that's it move it in here it's obviously going to be on the last six so I'm going to use a scale tool to scale it up somewhere here send it upward and I would extend this did not let that stick to the top and then I can extend this okay so I'll hide the frame for now in order for this image to be showing outside because I'm going to move it I'm going to enlarge it some more in order for it to show outside you would have to turn off the clip so I've turned off the clip and by turning off the clip you can now add some effects to it just like what they've done so all of them would have a, 
a stroke, a dark stroke. So give them that stroke, or give them the last stroke. And this last stroke, I'm going to reduce the opacity something like like this. Give it two and just reduce the opacity for all of them. Something like ten. Ten for the other ones. And for this other one, they used something like like 20 or so so give it a 20 and give them some soft blur so effects then i'm going to choose this black blow it up a bit something like that and then i'll reduce the opacity just a bit and then move this upward a bit as well starts there okay and get rid of this d99 okay so we have that select this one and change it to 50 percent okay and we can now put this in a frame select all of this give it a rounding of 20% 20% is fine sorry about that and you can now give put all of this in a frame so we'll bring this put it in a frame but you know what let's put the top one in a frame and leave the down one the way it is so put this up one in a frame right and that frame will be the background color yep all right cool select this once at the center the navigation and then make that 50 percent and you can see what we have here see the darker shade okay that works and yeah so we have this I think this is where we're going to stop for today we're going to stop here uh, or let me just do this other one and then we can stop so I'm going to draw a frame give it a stroke hide the fill and just draw that stuff select the color bring that round it right i don't need to redesign things when they are already there so copy this bring it in here select this screen paste it put this here right round those corners make that 10 and with that i'm going to duplicate it somewhere around there drag this downwards right select this move it here no need for the arrow i'm just going to leave that the image will take over and image here Move left repeat, select this, give it 10, right, and then give it you know splash color. I mean architecture, just choose an image for it. Any image can do. And fast my boy. Fast, fast, fast. image is loading yep so that's it once we get that done can now move to this other one so this one is simple just duplicate this right flip it okay so before we flip it let's get this done first 
almost to the set to the end and then we can now flip it reduce it flip it this way flip it a bit right so we're done with that give it a feel white select all of it now know the one that needs this to take out that stuff and then for this one give it this color break it and make that stuff 15 right make that stuff 15 and then we can give it the frame the general frame something like this give it that color and then move it and then give it the radius 20 and that is that move it out it's going to lap with our grid so turn on the grid right and i'll move this upward a bit it's going to be on the grid this is one two three four five so lap it with the fifth one so there'll be some room between the text and the other thing so with that we'll just copy all of this duplicate it and place it here no need to retype that because of the time it's already one hour gone <laughs> wow how time flies right so with this i'm actually going to put all of this in a frame so that's that container I'm talking about so I'll put it in a container like this and by doing this by doing this i'll be able to perform some miracles with it center it uh -huh. and that's what i was aiming for so container 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 this took up one two three four five so let's enlarge this to touch this part and with this we can center it and that is what's up control plus alt and we're going to have that okay so this is what we're going to do we're going to just skip all those other parts because of the time and just do the footer and we're done all right so grab this put it in here all right give it some proximity select this give it the primary color right something like this duplicate it give it the first secondary color put it here select this move it downwards select this downwards and then reduce the size and give it the footer shade and all of these colors need to extend by one you can see that white so it's good to zoom in let's see this part they are not there right bring in our arrow because I'm going to turn off the grid so turn off the grid so that it will not distract and then we can now start filling up the what's it called the review so design space has consistently delivered both and beyond you know what Laura Museum will finish the rest of it right so select that give it a medium and then increase the size this size should be 32 right and I would lap it on this line move this somewhere close to the end and then give it some proximity 
so the text put it on regular and it's going to go up some more and that text is the dark green that's what they're using and just grab one of these images bring it down here the image size at the moment is on 30 we're going to make that 60 by 60 and then okay there was no place i wrote a name grab this bring it in here give it that green as well and give it a name the view brown designer your designer sorry your designer is there anyone on the call okay select both of them close out the width select it again give it a proximity of 16 and with this we can place it here auto layout right give it a spacing of 16 as well and we have that move it downwards a bit now well, let's reduce the image a bit to like 50 and the proximity of this to like 12 reduce this to like 40 40 so the image is 40 the space between them is is 16 i'm going to use 12 now and the arrows the arrows can be done with the normal arrow so in figma so we have this arrow going that way duplicate it shift plus h to flip it the other way shorten this other one right select both of them auto layout change their color to the primary green someone is on the call bring them in get back to the design select the arrow select this and center them vertically right select this text bring it here put the two double column break it and with that i'll make it actually bold and then right click on it and i'll do flatten and then i can increase it the way i want yep so all of this go in a bit right all right so i like that select this select this put in auto layout select this auto layout with this now in auto layout and then we're going to put it vertically aligned center it no sorry top and then vertically aligned center aligned and they are now well aligned inside that container and then the other thing will be this other part so try um, make that white obviously try generics for free that is the size i'm going to use i'll make that medium and then grab one of these body tags bring them in here and make that white so on making that white we'll grab laura museum our lifesaver select a few of the tags paste it there and then delete the other ones then we can take this upward i would get rid of this other text i don't need them select this and this space between them 30 leave them that way and then the email box and all of those stuff so put the email box extend it a bit give it white as a box round our radius by eight and then we can now put your email and get started so i'll go up grab this get started copy it come downwards select this and paste it in there get started is ready to fly select this make it 10 
right so I like that select this text and I bring it out I'm going to type your email right make that regular something like this I would make that 16 actually something like this center left aligned center it and then I'll drop that text to 70 percent right we're almost at the end so we have that sorted you can do that with auto layout actually and you get something even way better you know uh, you know what let's do that with auto layout so select this text select this and then with auto layout I'm going to extend the horizontal padding it's going to be 10 you know what I'll increase it some more to let's see 15 and the height to 15 as well and I give it white first and then we can round these corners to 15 move that in and we'll have something like this give these two auto layout and then spread this other ones horizontally right with that they have a line cutting across both of them so I'm going to draw that line so nowhere to draw the line <laughs> white and make that 30 percent yeah select this bring it downwards somewhere around here give it some spacing our product products make that kind of bold and yeah that's fine then reduce the text the first text is what blah 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 I'll just copy Lorem Museum right put it in here it's on Roman which is cool and then I'll duplicate it multiple times spacing between them is 16 I duplicate it eight times kind of eight times three four five six seven eight nine ten I think it's two small in proximity I'll increase it a bit auto layout delete one auto layout with the heading and then I'm going to turn on the grid we're going to be using grid for this part and select this move it this way so this grid oh that's true Uh oh that's true where do I want to put it yeah so put it on this grid right for now I'll just make it black so I can see what I'm doing put it on this other one duplicate it again and again yeah so that's complete so their space in between them is 23 where well, I remember it was 24 we did so I'm going to select all of them auto layout and space in between them is 108 108 is fine change that to white and let's see if 108 is fine 108.5 yeah cool 108.5 and we have this okay so we have this now you know what let's break this center center reduce this to 10 reduce this to 10 as well push break this this other part increase it a bit the radius is at 
15 no, that's not bad all right so that is it guys uh, get rid of this at the top come to the top move all vertical and let's play this and see what we've done present Okay, so this is the design and yeah, this is it. Okay guys. So this is the design and uh, I hope you learned something from this design. Any questions before I call it a day? Does anyone have any question? Yeah? Does anyone have any question? If you have any question you can unmute and yeah ask your question um i have i have a question yes please go ahead um, okay so um i saw you use auto layouts even with texts on different locations on many occasions so i yeah. want to know what are uh, really the importance of auto layout and why is it a must use and in what cases must you use them actually and in what cases must you use them because okay. i mm -hmm. personally hardly use auto layouts in design okay i actually understand your question and in the cases for you to use auto layout is almost for all cases actually and i use auto layout majorly to align things in my design to keep it well aligned and structured because your eyes cannot always pinpoint uh, or eyeball the things that you've designed and have them well aligned so with auto layout it will be much easier for me to align anything at all in my designs and kind of keep them um keep them straight and well aligned so that's that's the reason why i use auto layout i don't know for other people but that is the major reason why i use auto layout i don't know if you get that so for things like even tables uh you might be having some tables and you want to use auto layout you want to use your eyes to align those things you would not get it you honestly won't get it but when you use auto layout it will help you keep those things in check and with the right calculations like these circles in this design i used auto layout so that the space in between them if i draw a line and place it here you see that that line would take up that space even with the art the grid the grid cannot do justice all the time um, to those things and then there are some complex things um like um which other one would i use as sample yes like this one now you can see how they are and if you if you try to align this with your own eyes or do them manually you won't have this arrangement the way they are well calculated and when i say well calculated i'm talking about the line the space in between all of these texts in between them and then also the space between this one and the one next and that's where photoshop and illustrator has not really done justice to it because no matter how you do it if you check Take your time and check it you're going to see that there'll be space um, some space in misalignment and then yeah it helps you save time so the time you use to be aligning those things and checking if they are accurate and all someone with auto layout has gone over to do 
whatever they want to do create a new design you're still in one design because you want it to be well aligned and that's what auto layer does for you so it helps you save time it helps you make calculated uh, decisions um, so you can decide to say oh this particular thing I'm going to give it a spacing of 20 px or 20 points and it's going to be 20 points for the rest of them so it, it will help you do that with ease without you having to stress yourself so much to get it done i hope this helps uh, answers your question my man yes thank you thank you you're welcome so while we were talking i, I did some micro or we call it interactive components and i've inter uh, kind of prototyped this i wanted to show you guys what it, it was already i had already done it while you were talking but that is it guys i don't know if there's any other question before i call it yeah, a day. I, have, please, I have a question please go ahead oh yeah i enter all the class late and i want to ask are you going to post it on youtube so that we that join it can go there to try and learn and see how things are done yeah i'll, I'll post it on youtube okay i'll edit then. it later on and post it yeah you're welcome okay. Yeah, um, I see your question, Clifford. Yes, I think it has a construct issue, and I think that's why the original creator did not um, use that color as the secondary button. I think it does, but I, I don't know. Uh, you can always do your testing and review it. If I'm going to make correction to that particular one, I think I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to give it the secondary color and see how it looks all right so i think with the secondary color it looks more better and that's why testing is good and testing with users not just testing by yourself and you've actually raised a very valid point yes so it had it had construct issues any other question yes sorry i have a question yes please go ahead okay for the grid system you use for this web project is it the same grid you use for basically everything and uh, what is it sorry okay yes it's the same grid i use for even my personal projects i use um the margin is 100 and then um the gutter i use 24 px for the gutter it's a 12 point grid and is there any other thing missing yeah so that's it the major thing is the margin and then um the gutter so the gutter is what you use to separate um, all of these other texts like these other ones here and then any other one like this uh, footer links these are called footer links so you use it to give that separation with the gutter and because it's a it's a 12 point grid I have used one space in between to create this and that has given me this balance so that's that's what I use and if you when i when i drop the video you see how i actually started uh, the design and yeah someone asked does that answer you bro okay. yes boss okay all right so someone just asked if uh that i they would love to see the micro interaction so i'll just share that screen and just creating micro interactions is very easy all right trust me it's very very easy um the major thing is to understand what do you want to do so for me if i want to create interactions for buttons the first thing i do is to create one button i don't need to create multiple buttons so i'll just grab this button all right let's zoom into it i would detach the instance so it's now a normal button and then what i'll do is come up here and create click on create component now you can do this in two ways you can either do a component set by creating all three of the buttons that's the hover state the primary button and then the secondary button and then select all three of them and put them in um what's it called put them in a component set but you can do it this way but i prefer the second one because it's much easier but you need to know this other way because um, you're going to create variants in the future so once you have your primary button all you need to do is come up back after you've created the components and click on add variants now i've added a second one and all i need to do is add 
another one so i'll add the third one so the third one i'm going to name them the third one is going to be secondary this middle one is going to be hover and then the first one is going to be default so the hover the secondary obviously had outlines so i'm going to go here give it the outline that's secondary color and i have my outline change the grid to uh, a two point weight grid and then with that i'm going to reduce the opacity not the opacity i'm going to change the color hue of this hover state so it can't be this color so i'll break it and then come up here and reduce the color a bit so i'll bring it downward so that when people hover on it just like when i hover on the main one that i've done when you hover on it you see the color change and then also with the other one so that's what i'm trying to achieve so i'll share this tab so i've reduced that now i have three of my stuff uh buttons that i want to use for this interaction the next thing i'll do is go to prototype select the primary now i'll tell this primary button when i hover on you go to where go to this one so this is the hover state so when i hover on this one show me this so i'll come up here and choose in the interaction table i'll choose while hovering and then come down here it's going to be on instant change it to smart animate and leave the setting uh for the ease out at 300 millisecond all right and doing that i'm going to select the secondary one because it's going to be on the screen it's definitely showing on the screen here so i'm going to select it and i'm going to tell it the same thing why hovering go to this one so i'll bring the setting again call go to y hovering and then it's going to be on smart animate at 300 millisecond and that's it so how do i now use this i'll have to bring it into my frame so how do i do that let's assume this is the frame for the design so i'll select one of it you can either select one of it here or you can go to your layer uh, settings you see this asset here click on assets you see the buttons now there are two different buttons and they are the same button so you may not know the one that i've created so because i want you to understand what i've done you can either drag it from here and use and it will be the same result right or let me even move this upward this is the first way you can get the buttons into your design or you can select it from this part hold alt hold alt on your keyboard left click and pull it out from there to duplicate it and you have it so now we have these two buttons we'll then play this prototype so that's the prototype we'll then play to see how it functions um in real time so by showing this screen you can now see how this functions and that is how it's going to function in any design that you put it in it's going to function this way so we call it interactive components because they are components that you don't need to start animating another screen like du duplicating everything so you can just have one particular screen in your design just one screen like this carrying so many interactions and that's why it's called interactive component i can also prototype this entire thing and it will just be in here and just create only this micro interactions and i'll have something really dynamic so so guys that's it um in the absence of any other question i would uh say good night to everyone and uh yeah enjoy your weekend good night guys